Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilu here in Windsor in the UK. Um, I'm today with Julia. Hello Julia. Hello, how are you? Good. So um, you have started charities and you're a humanitarian, I guess we could say? I, yes, I am. I work on international peace and justice issues around the world. Got you into this because this is a big chunk. Uh, a lot of us just watch TV and procrastinate or have fear, and you decided to step in. Well, I, I, I think God asked me. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I would have um, uh, thought of it myself, um, but uh, I had a calling, and the calling was to do something. I didn't quite know what it was, so I thought it was something to do with peace, but I wasn't sure. And um, earlier on than 40 years yes, ago? Yes, it's a long time ago now. So um, I set up the charity 25 years ago, and we've been doing quite a bit of bridge building, um, but uh, we're, we're now really going to be focusing on peace. Um, but the work so far has been um, trying to shape global policy and practice through a human rights and responsibilities approach. So rather than monitoring violations, we were trying to use human rights as a positive framework for action. Um, and we've been very successful, I have to say, which is lovely. Mm. And now you're going into this, I heard this peace retreat over in the Middle East. <laughs> yes, I feel, I feel I'm, I'm really being called to do something in the Middle East. I've been in and out of the area for 40 years or so. And um, this is going to be very exciting because we're going to build a residential peace retreat in the Middle East, uh, which will hold the vision that peace is possible. And I believe that it is. In fact, I believe it's inevitable, really, because we're not going to resolve the problems we've got in the world unless we work together, unless we cooperate um, and uh, join the dots, as somebody was talking about earlier on. I think it's a question of uh, finding a way that all people of goodwill can really work together. And the peace retreat will be um, a place where people can go to um, prevent conflict, hopefully um, mediate any conflict that does arise, um, but also uh, inspire people to um, work for peace and justice themselves. Mm. What, can, what can bring peace? What is needed? What is the, the, the process for you? Because it's something we, we hardly know of. I mean, how can we... Do, do you feel this in your heart and you just know and it's a certainty and that's what's guiding you? Or you just, step by step, uh, it shows up... Uh, but I think uh, we've, we've got, a, in the charity, we've just adopting a three-step plan. We're saying the pinnacle of this is the peace retreat. But secondly, very sort of um, concrete, we need to know how to um, change the global systems. We've got unjust economic system. Uh, we've got a, a corrupt financial system. And so there's sort of, we need to see what needs to be done differently. How do we bring young people into the political domain? How can we give them a voice? Um, so all of those sort of changes that we require, that's the technical things, which will continue through our secretariat and getting involved with people. And the third step is probably where we should start, which is having peace within. Mm -hmm. How can I be an instrument of peace? What do I have to do to be peace? Um, and it really is a lot of work on ourselves and each and every one of us, I think. And we've um, set up a beautiful center in Liverpool in the UK here, um, which we call The Light. And we're running courses to inspire people to be, um, to, to be the change. I know Linda will have probably used this phrase, but to be the change we want to see in the world and to um, take that out into our own spheres of influence. So I think the, the inner peace is a really important starting point. Um, and if everybody could really be in touch with that divine energy that is in everyone of peace and compassion and, and, and so forth, um, we can make the world a better place. Mm. Most of the time, I feel that when people are doing their work, if they're called to peace, that means that's the biggest thing they have to deal with. Do you feel, did you had a, a turbulent story before getting to this place too? Or <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, when we were discussing the plans, it was around about Easter this year, 
I suddenly got really fearful. Um, it's enormous. I got to raise a hundred million pounds. It's a lot of money, and I just it seemed such an incredibly big responsibility, mm -hmm. and I was frightened. And you really have to work through that and and realize that um, um, if I'm doing this work, I'm doing it because I've been given that opportunity by God, and God will work through me. So it's not my plan, mm -hmm. it's his plan, mm -hmm. uh, or her plan. <laughs> and um, and they, then you'll have the strength. And then there'll be people who come together. We've got some wonderful people who are sort of coming together around this idea of the Global Peace Retreat. And um, we're going to be launching a fantastic campaign um, based on a beautiful song of a friend of mine called 100,000 Angels. And we're looking for 100,000 angels out there who will give us a little bit of money each. And then I, if everybody gave us a thousand pounds, I'd have my hundred million. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a way of finding things that people can do and be involved in. And I want to do this crowdfunding because I want it to be owned by the world not by a few rich people who give a few million each. We really want it to be a global uh, facility. Mm -hmm. So I've sort of gone from fear to feeling very, very excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the last 25 years of running the charity have certainly not been easy. Um, but uh, I think if I had had the opportunity of walking away, I might have done. Uh, because the work has been tough, I've been out in difficult places, I've had, you know, it's been um, very tiring. Um, but uh, when you see the results, when you can see that a law has been changed, or to give an example, I was involved in um, advising the South African uh, Constitutional Assembly, and they put the right to water into the Constitution, and as a consequence of which, people now have access to water in South Africa in a much more meaningful way than they did before. And you think, wow, you know, that was important, so it, it's worth getting up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, because the the more it's outside of ourselves, and I feel we're at service, then we're we the creativity, the the the, the information, the thoughts, the the love, the energy comes. Absolutely, and I think the uh, it's a question of just making sure that we're sufficiently present um, to be able to receive whatever it is that um, we're supposed to be receiving, and I have as um, um, a uh, uh, the wonderful prayer, Lord, make me an instrument instrument of Thy peace. I'm getting tired too, so <laughs> this is why. Um, but the if we can sort of keep feeling that we are of service and keep that in mind and get rid of the ego because the ego has to go. Mm. You can't serve with an ego, um, and just be present and um, ready to do whatever it is you're asked to do. Um, each of us has a unique role. And um, I know that people are doing wonderful things around the world. And we just need to support each other mm -hmm. and encourage each other. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for this conversation and your inspiration and you being out in the world, doing what you're doing, thank bringing you. magic. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, my beautiful co-creators, for watching. Thank you for sharing these beautiful videos. I send you much love. I love you. Bye.